I believe that you will grow. I believe so. If I have not this belief, I will not have returned to Malaysia. Uh, God sent me to Malaysia and praise God, He gave me a scholarship. It's God who gave. Of course, the government gave in reality, but uh, to get that scholarship is not easy. Huh? And I almost missed it by just this because I felt inferior to take the exam. I felt ill-prepared, but most of all, I felt inferior. Huh? Uh, nonetheless, I passed the exam. I was surprised. I passed the interview and they gave me a scholarship, spent 15 years over there, did well in my uh, career. I tell you, at one time, you know, as an engineer, a uh, client would have to pay my company and as such me uh, 550 US dollar per day. And that would be about 30 years ago. That's right. Uh, that's where my eyes open up uh, to the, uh, you know, the so-called wealth of this world. Uh, but God asked me to give them all up. Uh, and uh, and uh, I went to the ministry, starting with uh, uh, my sting in Singapore. And then uh, he told me to come back and uh, not to any place. Uh, Lord, why don't I go to... Uh, Shah Alam, Shah Alam sounds good, okay? But the preferred place is uh, Pataling Jaya. At that time, uh, Subang was not well known yet uh, because of the airplane thing, you know, at the Subang airport. But he says, you go back to Klang. And uh, I took my wife for a survey, both of us cried. Okay, we didn't cry for the people, <laughs> we cried for ourselves. This is the place we are coming. Yes, you are going to be here, all right? Uh, we no longer cry anymore, praise God. Uh, since coming back, I think it's about 22 to 23 years. Huh? And uh, when I came back, I also made uh, decisions. This will be the place very likely. In fact, I will die and I will be buried if Jesus does not return sooner. Huh? So there is no use for my PR, Singapore PR. Huh? Uh, so I, uh, yeah. I didn't tear them away. I surrendered it to the uh, government. Uh, I'm no longer going to go back to Singapore as uh, you know, PR. In fact, they did uh, offer me a citizenship, which uh, I rejected. I didn't feel that it was the right thing to do. Uh, but having come back you know, to give back the PR, I have uh, quite a number of people who uh, uh, let me know that it's... Uh, Wrong decision, foolish decision. Can I sue a bit la? Keep it in case, in case. Uh, I think there's no in case with God. Can somebody say an amen? Uh, if you know what God wants you to do, uh, there is no in case. There is no plan B. It's plan A. All right. And plan A may not seem to look, uh, you know, lucrative at that moment, but eventually it will. It always will. Can you say an amen? So I've been served God for 30 over years. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm better than okay. okay. Amen. And you will be. Amen. Give God a hand. Come on, somebody give God a hand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, let me, let me, let me, before I speak, uh, let me commit this time to the Lord. It's a precious time. And uh, Father, we uh, definitely do not want to waste this time. It got to be your word. It got to be your Holy Spirit ministry. And uh, I keep myself under the cross. Let Jesus Christ be revealed so that when your people leave this place, Lord, they leave this not the same way they came. Every time, Lord, when we leave the presence of God, we leave, Lord, with some positive take, some divine take, so that God in these uh, coming days or weeks, that which we have taken home. That, that is the one, Lord, that we will rely and trust, that God, my God, is able. So I pray, bless your people, bless your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to uh, share with you uh, a message, or rather a testimony entitled, My Journey of Faith. Uh, two months ago, my wife left eyelid, couldn't open uh, it happened suddenly, and to make matter worse, the uh, ophthalmologist whom uh, we consulted say that the pupil in her eye uh, was uh, dilated. 
uh, one eye, she measured about 2 mm, I think it's in mm, and the other was a 3.5 to 4. It's, um, you know, double, all right? So she advised us, the eye specialist advised us to see a, a neurosurgeon immediately because any delay could be fatal. We went immediately to see a neurosurgeon and he did an MRI and blood test uh, on my wife, but he couldn't find the cause of her eye problem. And then she was referred to a neurologist. And this is where I discovered for the first time there is a difference between a neurosurgeon and a neurologist. Hopefully my pronunciation is correct. Uh, the specialist doctor also uh, could not find any cause after he did a CT scan and an extensive blood test for which it would take uh, two weeks to process and it may need to be sent overseas uh, because of the lack of equipment to find out uh, this uh, particular cause which he thought that it might be the uh, cause of the uh, eyelid uh, unable to open problem. Uh, but he, as I mentioned earlier, couldn't find uh, the cause of a problem. So here we have uh, the MRI, the CT scan, numerous blood test result, all came back negative. Yet her eyelid remained closed and the pupil dilated. One of the doctor, the neurologist, said that her case was unusual. The first he came across, whereby the symptoms and the test result did not match. He didn't prescribe any medications. All of them did not prescribe any medication. Uh, in fact, I'll be open to let you know that the eye specialist did not want to treat her. Okay? Uh, it's, I cannot do anything for you. So we, we were left on our own. Or may I say I was left on my own to nurse my wife back to health. Uh, not only uh, you know, that she needed to readjust her life without an eye, the stress from the inconclusive uh, diagnosis left an indelible fear of what next, especially after we were told that uh, her case could be fatal. Uh, they were talking it could be a tumor that pressed against the eyeball uh, and uh, it would require surgery, or it could be a uh, clot, you know, in the blood vessels, uh, and if uh, it, uh, let's say, bursts, uh, it could be very, very dangerous. It means uh, it could cost her life. Uh, so this was what we were told and words spoken, ladies and gentlemen, they are not easily forgotten. And I might let you know that I was, uh, I was afraid. I was afraid that I would have a long-term uh, yeah, issue of uh, having to nurse my wife without an eye or I could uh, lose her. But thankfully, we have God on our side. Amen? Thankfully, we have God on our side. I believe everyone or anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be safe and safe as well. Uh, the question I wrestled during that period uh, was how do I call upon the name of the Lord under these circumstances? Should I do spiritual warfare against the devil? You know, buy here and buy there, lose here and lose there for my wife's healing. That was what I was accustomed. I have done to evangelistic services before. I've seen, uh, yeah, Great miracles of God. Uh, yeah, we did bind some devils and, uh, uh, you know, lose uh, some he uh, healing virtues on people and it works. 
But I wrestle, should I do that? Or should I speak in tongue extensively for her healing? As prayer is not another option, but the only option to nurse my wife back to help, and under these stressful circumstances, I needed to have the correct approach and fast. Because of my training, uh, I know uh, I can, uh, you know, uh, yeah, say a lot of things, you know, or fake it to the customer, especially don't want to let them know the real issue and then fix it behind. Uh, because we know what is the real cause, all right? Uh, but in this case, I cannot fake. It's a real thing and dangerous thing. Uh, I need to have God's approach and fast. Uh, the Holy Spirit showed me uh, that uh, I should have communion with my wife daily as the approach or the way to her recovery. I, I felt that in my chest. I have thought of so many other options. When we went back, you know, uh, uh, you know there were many silence moments. Um, and uh, because this issue hits me so suddenly, uh, I didn't have an immediate response. We pray, but those prayers are merely just to comfort us that God cares. But, uh, you know, uh, if you have gone through a uh, situation as mine, it's a different ball game altogether. Uh, so, 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 there it was, you know, uh, I needed an answer. I've been seeking God for that. And I felt in my chest, really, I felt in my chest a voice telling me, uh, have communion with your wife daily. That's the last thing that I would have thought of as the approach, all right? Uh, but then I obey. Uh, it has been uh, uh, many weeks that uh, my wife and I have communions. Uh, I would say probably about a, a, a month and a half. That will be about five to six weeks. I'd like to share the good news uh, with all of you that uh, her closed eyelid is now fully open. Praise be to God. Amen. As well as the deletion of the uh, pupils, it has uh, strung back to normal size as the other. Uh, there are several ways I can, uh, uh, you know, evidently give you the uh, proof that uh, this uh, eye is recovered. Uh, the ability of the eye to uh, naturally open and flicker. Particularly, you know, uh, when we, um, you know, kind of uh, uh, flick our eyes, both eyes synchronized together, okay? Uh, this is something she could not do uh, previously. Uh, but now, her eye uh, synchronized, that means uh, she looked to the left or to the right, the eyeball or the pupils will move in synchronization as well as uh, the eyelid. Uh, you know, flickered the same way. Uh, the opening of the eye is another miracle. Uh, uh, she was closed all the time. In order to um, open the eye, I need to, uh, or she needs to, um, you know, lift up the eyelid. And then uh, when she let go of it, uh, the um, eyelid will drop. And, and that's, that's it. She cannot see. Uh, but we saw how, you know, God opened her eye to about 30, 40 degree, and it just opened, uh, rather percent, you know, open, and then it opened further. Um, the other thing is my wife have, uh, uh, has a lovely, uh, uh, you know, round eyes, double eyelid. <laughs> so, I, uh, you know, um, initially the double eyelid uh, could not, uh, you know, let's say, uh, bent over inside. Huh? Uh, so it was a double eyelid nevertheless, but not as natural as the left. But today, uh, it is both natural. Praise God. Fully open. I give God all the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I thank God. I thank God for my wife's eyesight recovery. As I said earlier, uh, anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved 
and they will be healed as well. So my wife's uh, uh, recovery is a very, very huge relief to me. Uh, but after hearing uh, my testimony, uh, the question that some people may want to uh, know is, uh, why did the Holy Spirit uh, direct me to approach my wife healing uh, through having communion with her daily? All right. As I said, my initial was, response was once, one of obedience without reservation. Uh, now that the obedience paid off, uh, I can uh, share some of my experiences from my journey of faith, which I hope can uh, encourage you. Uh, if ever the Spirit of God would uh, lead you likewise. Uh, the first thing is, the Holy Communion points to our atonement through Christ Jesus. Uh, the atonement is the sacrifice Jesus paid for my sin. Since the wages of sin is death, my sin led to Christ's death. Now, if you can grasp this, you will realize that the atonement of Christ is a very, very huge thing indeed. The death of one life for another. In fact, it's the death of the sinless Son of God for a sinful me. And the Holy Communion symbolizes it. Uh, when I took the communion with my wife daily, the more I took the communion, the more I went beyond the uh, symbolic nature of the uh, partaking the Holy Communion, I went beyond the religious rites of it. I literally or really experience uh, the reality of Christ's atonement for my sin. Christ pardoning my sin. And here I am a pastor, <laughs> a man of God. And, I, I, and, 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 and I, it's not a matter of I realize. We all always realize but a realization that, uh, you know, like being transported to uh, the um, cross where Christ died is, uh, is kind of different. And I was remorseful. I was remorseful of my sins. The scripture says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. The emblem I was holding points to God pardoning my sins. I use the word pardon because uh, of late there has been this word pardoning of who, who, you know, running around in uh, the news media in our country. And, uh, and that is very huge. Uh, I'm a criminal, all right? I'm a sinful man. Uh, but here, God Almighty uh, wants to pardon my sin. And if God could pardon my sin, if He could provide purification for my sin, and if I indeed experience that pardoning, I am a free man. I have been forgiven by the Almighty. Uh, all my records, uh, they are deleted under the blood of Jesus. And if I can experience that and standing to here before you, I, I feel the joy. I feel the joy. You know, I'm not sharing something uh, out of uh, uh, a duty or, you know, a, a, an event. But I say, thank God. Thank God He forgive my sin. And I stand as a man of God, called by God to share with God's people good news, good news. All right? He can forgive your sin. He wants to forgive your sin. And if He can do that for you and me, He can also heal our diseases as well. Amen? He can. And He can heal my wife's blinded eye. It is simple as that. And so, uh, the daily uh, communion with my wife paved the way to build my faith, which I admit that I didn't have when the crisis hit us or hit me so suddenly. Uh, so here I was, you know, going through this process of uh, 
this daily communion and praying. And it came upon a time that I, I really believe that God can. And not only He can, but He cares for me. He really cares for me. And, and this is one message I like to share with you know, pastors and, 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 and leaders. And, and I share, you know, at some pastors' uh, uh, forums uh, just recently. And uh, I felt that because we minister has always been giving people. Uh, and uh, if anything, you know, God wants to give uh, to his, uh, uh, you know, uh, people, the minister of God will often say, channel it to your people for channel it. And uh, it can be a um, uh, huge burden to, uh, to take, uh, especially uh, for our wives. You know, uh, we are called to the ministry. We work hard for the Lord Jesus. I believe that uh, many of us would uh, have uh, prayed or even, uh, you know, surrender to an extent that we are even willing to die for Jesus Christ. Okay, uh, but here we have an issue. We have an issue. Does God care? To experience that He cares. Wow, that is huge. Very huge indeed. So, having Holy Communion move uh, us together to pivot towards God, not out of options, not out of uh, desperation, but uh, of trust in a loving God. All right, we hold hands and believe that uh, we will uh, journey this together. I will take care of you for the rest of my life, even if it's at the expense of ministry. Uh, I need to give her that assurance. All right. Uh, so this uh, approach uh, distress our prayer time together and allow faith its proper place to uh, build up. This could have pave the way for her recovery. Uh, the Holy Communion, even though it's symbolic of the atonement of Christ, nevertheless, it should not be underestimated nor taken for granted because it is God's forgiveness for our sin. If that's the case, does it also tell us that God can heal our body? Amen? Secondly, the Holy Communion represents oneness with Christ. Matthew 26, verse 26, When they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink. From it, all of you, this is my cup of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. I use this scripture many times during communion with my church to stress oneness with Christ. However, there is another part of the oneness which is equally important to stress. And that is the oneness between members of the body of Christ. The crisis my wife and I were facing, we needed to be one in this journey of faith. She was leaning on me for answer. And I, I didn't have any at that time. All right? which resulted in the many silence moments. You pray for so many people. Can't you pray for me to recover? I am praying, honey. But we dare not say, why isn't God touching me or healing me? We dare not say, reality is nothing. Uh, happened. And so, you, you know, um, um, you, you know, this, this, this silence moments, uh, 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 they were very awful. They were very awful. And um, the loss of words to say to each other could drift two person apart. Um, yet we cannot say anything. And hopefully that uh, it make up for the silence. 
Sometimes in those silent moments, you wonder if God is there. It was tough. But let's go for something more positive. The scripture says, one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to fly. A cord of three strands could not easily be broken. So here, both of us needed to uh, be of one mind and one heart in this ordeal. Uh, so here I was with her and uh, in my heart, I have... Uh, you know, confess, or at least I, uh, you know, tell myself, it is so much easier to achieve oneness with uh, Christ than the oneness with another person. That was the experience I went through. We agreed to the prescription of the Holy Spirit to take communion daily, Submitting to one another and pray for each other. This approach, ladies and gentlemen, in so much as it set, you know, the emotion for the healing of her eye, what happened was it also provided time and space for the healing of our relationship. Maybe I didn't know I needed that. But that's for today only. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, a few times uh, we were praying together. There were long prayers. There were short prayers. Uh, nonetheless, a few times when we were doing uh, this communion and praying together, I felt that I was in a uh, marriage encounter retreat. Uh, those old times marriage encounter retreat where they, uh, you know, uh, confine the couples into a room and let them talk, okay? Uh, so I thought uh, I was in one of that and, uh, um, you know, you do feel uncomfortable but you just have to get on with it. And so in those moments of uh, uh, having communion, talk to each other, pray for each other. Uh, I found that uh, both of us, I believe she would have said the same thing. But for me, I went through a uh, relationship. I call it a relationship detoxification. Uh, <laughs> not that I'm a bad person, uh, or I'm a lousy husband or a irresponsible father. Uh, but uh, there might be. You don't know what, you know, is uh, blocking uh, our blood vessels and all the other things inside, but God knows. And because He cares and He loves, He wants us in our next phase of life. I'm 60 years old now. Um, yep, yeah, uh, looks great to be 60, all right? Uh, yeah, many years ahead. He wants us to enjoy, uh, you know, each other far better than uh, uh, previously, all right? So here was... I undergoing uh, relationship detoxification. Oneness is a very powerful weapon in prayer. Uh, the scripture says, if two of you uh, on earth agreed about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. That's so simple. Just two in, on earth agree. But yet, you know, trying to agree with Another person is sometimes so much difficult so, compared to trying to agree with God. <laughs> or maybe we you know we force God to agree with us. That's why it's easier. <laughs> All right. Uh, for two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. Uh, yeah. Needless to say, this unity is a stumbling block to uh, prayer. And uh, oneness uh, will be the way ahead. Uh, right now, even though my wife's eyes have recovered, uh, we continue to take daily communion because we are enjoying the oneness that we have achieved through it. Uh, indeed, we needed the oneness, the daily you know, purification of our relationship if we are to have longevity uh, and effectiveness uh, in our relationship as well as uh, you know, in our serving God. 
Yeah? To God be all glory, okay? And finally, the third thing that uh, I experience through this uh, daily Holy Communion with my wife is Holy Communion is our covenant in Christ. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11.25 In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Taking the Holy Communion is likened to repeating the marriage vow or stating aloud the terms of a contract sign. We have a covenant with God whereby God promised to abide in us if we abide in Him. Now that I have a problem where doctors couldn't solve, where can I go? But to the Lord. So taking communion with my wife gave me the confidence to approach God's throne of grace to receive mercy and find grace to help us in time of our need. And that verse, you know, just uh, uh, here says Jesus, you know, uh, sympathize with us because he has also suffered just like us. So when I read that verse, um, uh, you know, like a bulb gift, Turn on. Uh, I realize that the throne of God is not a throne of judgment. It's not a throne whereby uh, you know you just have to have an imagination. He's sitting on the throne. People coming to the throne uh, in awe, in fear. That's not the, that that the approach God wanted us, His children, to have. It's a throne of grace, at least at this junction. It's a throne of grace, okay? All right, I am uh, not up to the mark spiritually. All right, you know, I still have many of my, uh, yeah, you know, life to deal with. But Father, I'm still coming to you because of this covenant relationship that you and I have. Amen. So during the communion, I reminded God of His covenant. We are not begging God for help. We are reminded, reminding Him that uh, He has an obligation to help us in the terms of the covenant, which it says that, you know, God is not a man that He should lie, nor a human being that He should change His mind. Does He speak and not act? Does He promise and not fulfill? So here, the Holy Communion isn't just any symbolic gesture or religious rite. It is in it the covenant established between God and us and since God cannot lie. Therefore, He who began a good work in us, in all of us, will bring it to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. God will help us overcome our crisis. It is our crisis, but God is beside us to help us overcome it. It is simple as that. Amen? It's simple as that. Alright? And just one more. There is another take for the Holy Communion uh, as a covenant in Christ for husband and wife. Uh, Hebrews chapter 13, 4 says, Marriage should be honoured by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Now, if we expect God to take His covenant promise with us seriously, shouldn't we take our covenant promise with our spouse you know, seriously as well? Uh, shouldn't we also take our covenant, you know, as the body of Christ seriously, which means honouring our word is a sweet fragrance to the nostril of God. God is pleased when we do not take covenant relationship lightly. And I want to say to you, there is power in honouring the covenant relationship that we establish through Christ Jesus in this body of Christ. Amen? in this body of Christ. So, in conclusion, I thank God for healing my wife's uh, eyesight. 
after almost seven weeks uh, confined to the house, uh, the last three weeks uh, she has uh, gone outside with me, uh, having meal in restaurant together is not to be taken for granted anymore. Not after uh, what we have uh, went through. All right, so uh, it's a new whole uh, like a day for uh, both of us. And uh, uh, I'm not doing all this to uh, pay out for lost time, but uh, I begin to realize that my God is far bigger than I think. My God is far loving and caring than I think. That means I thought I, thought I had it, but uh, God... Uh, Surprise me. Surprise, surprise, surprise. All right. I have far more for, for you. Uh, Lord, uh, wow, well, uh, this new satellite could see some kind of uh, uh, universe far beyond the old satellite. Why don't you take me and your church on a journey far, far deeper in you than we ever experienced? We want it. We need it. And God, you lovingly want us to experience it as well. So I hope you are blessed by my testimony. Just a reminder that uh, Holy Communion uh, is um, the atonement uh, uh, that uh, Christ gave us. Holy Communion is the oneness uh, that uh, it represents the oneness with Christ. And of course, finally, the Holy Communion uh, is our covenant uh, through Christ Jesus. It's very powerful. Uh, God loves all of us. He has great things in store for us. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just give Jesus a hand. Thank you. Amen.